Day. A week ago, we were talking of Leeds as possible champions. Now they face a fight to hold on to runners-up spot. Two defeats in the week have effectively ended their title challenge. And a tough match against Bradford is the last thing they wanted just before the Cup semi-final. But it's the top match of the day at Odsall. The teams and it could be a battle royal. Last line of defence belongs to Roger Simpson and Alan Tate. Wings, Jim Fallon, 30 tomorrow, and Neil Summers returns in an unaccustomed position. Paul Cook gets a chance, and it's Gary Christie in fine form for Northern. Centres Carl Hall and Kevin Iroh with eyes on a sixth Wembley appearance. One of the best in the world, Paul Newlove, while Francis Cummins moves inside. Standoff David Heron, one of five former Leeds men in this Bradford lineup, and Craig Innes covers Gary Schofield's absence. Halfbacks, England's number seven against France's best, Fox against Onta. Forwards, Roy Powell, another ex lead man, Neil Harmon, on from the start. Benefit man, John Hamer, and 20-year-old Jim Leatham. Harvey Howard's out, and he's struggling to be fit for the semi-final. Hookers, ex leads number nine, Trevor Clark and James Lowe's. Second row, Paul Dixon, the fourth, former Headingley favourite, and a senior for Milo. Carl Furbank is still seeking his 100th Bradford try, and Richie Ayres for Leeds. Loose forward, Paul Medley, the fifth Leeds old boy, and Ellery Hanley, once of Bradford. The subs, Robbie Paul and Marcus Vasilakopoulos, and Eugene Bourneville and Matt Schultz. The coaches, former Leeds boss, Peter Fox, and Doug Lawton. Match referee is Colin Morris, he was the reserve official at yesterday's Challenge Cup semi-final today. He's very much in the big league here in the Stones Bitter Championship. And Bradford Northern would like nothing better than to dent Leeds Championship hopes still further. It's a long shot now that they will get anywhere near Wigan come the end of the season. But Leeds quite simply must get form on the board for their semi-final next week and push Wigan all the way to the end of the season. Sure thing, Eddie, they've got to build their confidence. One of their biggest problems in their losses to Sheffield and St. Helens midweek was the fact that their defence was being deplorable. Well, a real mix-up there. Three on one, Powell gets up to play the ball and he just lost it. There was no interference. Look by the referee Colin Morris to his touch judges. Nothing else was gleaned from that, thus the scrum. This is Kevin Iroh taking on Derek Fox and David Heron getting through him and Iroh loses the ball. That's all very sloppy from these two sides in the opening exchanges. A lot of tension, of course. It's always a big game. Bradford leads. The impact there of the centre, Carl Hall, using the shoulder and the forearm. John Hamer with that little run for Bradford Northern. Trevor Clark has gone into dummy half. Decided to take them on on his own. Neil Harmon there wearing number eight today in from the start for Leeds. He's anxious too to cement a place in that uh, semi-final next week, I'm sure. Paul Newlove with a little run. Just a little punch thrown in there. Crowd picked it up, referee didn't. There you see it. Drop forward, Jim Latham. Bradford kicking on the last tackle, but Derek Fox's uh, grubber kick only finding dead in goal. Well, he'll be far from happy with that. It was far too strong. Once again, we must remind viewers that uh, at Otzel Stadium, the speedway track, you can see the corners in the in-goal area. They still go up. Pinching the ball. Well, it's a stop-start affair for the first few minutes. Little doubt about it. Paul Medley. Arm inside. Reefing the ball away from Leatham. Medley playing loose forward today for Bradford Northern. Brian McDermott is unfit and Leeds don't find touch with the kick. So Roger Simpson can launch another Bradford Northern attack. That was dreadful from Leeds. They really should have punched the ball into row X of the stand. Furbank's run. Clark the dummy half. Fox and he finds Dixon. Now Roy Powell. Roy Powell, of course, former Leeds man. And that's how close he has dragged Bradford Northern now. They're 10 metres short of the line with Heron. Heron to Roger Simpson. Simpson cut down. Good tackling it was by Fimilo. This is Fox. Long ball out wide to Newlove. And Newlove gets it out wide, but that ball was dropped. That's no 
try for Gary Christie. It was laid on a plate, and I'm afraid the winger just dropped it. It was a superb flick on from Newlow. Look at that. And the winger, open line. Oh, what a disaster for the youngster Gary Christie, who's been in fine form of late. Has indeed, Christie. Head-to-head -head between these two matches in the first division, there have been 41 games, three draws, and Bradford have 22 victories to lead 16. So Bradford do have the upper hand in these matches. Hanley slips on the Odsall surface. Former Bradford Northern favourite, of course, Ellery Hanley. He's 34 tomorrow, by the way. James Lowe's the Leeds hooker. Ball pops up, bounces back. Whose ball is that? He's called, I think, the knock on. He's put the scrum down, the referee. Just popped up there. James Lowe's trying to get the ball away. And I think you'll find that uh, he's deemed, and rightly so, I think you'll find that it was David Heron's hand that came across it. And this is where the ball comes up. And Heron just gets a fingertips to it, perhaps. That's why it's a feed to Leeds. Penalty at the scrum. And ironic cheers from the Bradford Terraces. Well, well, well. Feeding your own scrum. Mark that down. Mother's Day, 95. A referee has pulled up home feed. What will we get next? Powell on the halfway line. That's what we'll get next. Furbank takes the ball into Leeds territory. Still going Furbank and gets a lovely pass away. It was a good call. Gee, this game needs a good break soon. Dixon. Referee has pulled Leeds for offside. Bradford want to play it quickly with Dixon. They must all be offside again, Leeds, surely. It's got to be the same bit now, surely, as he's warned them. No, he's not going to take them, not going to make an official warning either. Alan Tate. Little tap on uh, the referee's back there. But good thinking here. Paul Dixon realising that Leeds had made no attempt to go the 10 and neither had that defence there. Brought forward Neil Harmon, caught out. Good thinking from the second row. Well, Derek Fox, as you can see, two goals away from the Magic 100 for the season and this should be one of them. Hits the post and bounces back and luckily for Leeds for Milo was the man who was more awake than anybody else here's Francis Cummins playing in the centre today they're 20 metres from their own line Leeds, Leatham now will try and run the ball further downfield makes 9 metres and on to now, the French international captain, Harmon. That's good tackling. Furbank picked him out like a missile then and dropped him to the ground. He's done it again on on tap. Well, he's got the message through, hasn't he? He's had two cautions from Colin Morris for high tackles. Chip over the top has found Iro. Referee says play on. That's a knock-on from Medley. Leeds have got the ball back. It's down to zero in the tackle count. Oh, this is more looking more like Australian rules as it goes on. Tip, tap, tap. What on earth are they thinking about? First tackle, trying to get the ball away. Panic football. Richie Ayres. It's a good run, and that's a great pass. Oh, that looks high. High from Clark. Referee says it came off the shoulder. Play on. Hanley. Hanley with the run. And Hanley dragging Leeds to within eight metres of the line. Quick play the ball here and Bradford could be in trouble, but Iroh's passed to nobody and Newlove's picked it up. And Fallon did well, but Fallon has missed him again. And Newlove's off, but the referee wants him back. He's called a knock-on. All this effort from 
new lot gone to waste. Back up the other end, Paul. It's a knock-on, and it's Leeds head and feed. Well, I don't know what the knock-on's for, really. I thought he picked it up well. This is where Iroh gets the ball to nowhere. Now, it's obviously deemed that Newell have got a fingertip to that, and he didn't. He was not stopped. He should have carried on. And not surprisingly, Newell have taken his time. Referee stopped the clock. Well, I don't think Newell have... They thought that... Uh, well, it's obviously that Colin Morris thought that he got a fingertip to it. You can see on the replay that he didn't. He's run 70 metres. But why on earth? Did, I mean, look at that. It's awful passing. He was nowhere near it, and he picked it up cleanly. Well, the crowd are booing Eddie, and I think they're booing mainly for the fact that that was a little bit of uh, football for a change. Onto with the feed, and he finds Innes, and Innes will drag Alan Tate back on the inside. Lowe's, Onta, Onta to Innes. Gets the ball out to Cummins, and Cummins finds Cook, and referee says forward pass. Well, I don't know about you, Steve, but I'm tired of hearing this referee's whistle. But he can't blame him. Fairbank. That's a better run from Fairbank. The sort of run that lifts a team and lifts a game. That's what we need. They're doing the hard work, Bradford. They're using their forwards well, and they're gaining those gr that ground. Medley. Here's Furbank again. Another strong run from him. Fox, Heron. Here's Roy Powell. That's the last tackle. It's the turnover. Jim Leatham doing good defensive work for Leeds. Now Innes. Well, there again, we saw Bradford do all the hard work, and it was a nothing finish to the set of six. To be caught with the end over like that is a sin. You've got to push the ball into the corner. You've got to try to apply the pressure. Bradford offside. They're all standing then, to be fair, about two metres in front of referee Colin Morris. Look at them. Had a few to pick from, didn't he? Like 11? Did you a quick counter, already? <laughs> well, I saw there were two st stood at the marker position. <laughs> Two that was back in the fullback. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Here's Leatham. Well, let's see if we can get uh, Craig Innes and Patrick Ontar working together. That's good tackling, though, by uh, the Bradford defence. This now is Iro. Lowe's gives it to Ayres. Richie Ayres. First real threat, really, on this uh, Bradford line, but that's the last tackle. Lowe's again, dabs it into that corner, looking for a bit of help from the raised corners. None was forthcoming. Well, the idea was there, but it was far too strong. Yeah, he pushes into the corner, but you can see that the elite players that was not aware of what was going on. They've got to start talking to each other a little bit more. Both sides look totally lost. It's as though they'd never played with each other for quite some time. Number 14 for Leeds, Marcus Vasilikopoulos has come on. And it's Jim Leatham who has been withdrawn. I must say, Steve, when you were away, we had the international, uh, we had a, a Leeds match rather that, uh, that uh, Marcus Vasilikopoulos came on in, and he really has lost a stack of weight. Yeah, he's gone for speed now, that's for sure. He's a talented footballer. He's a youngster. Dougie Lawton said he'd the best he'd seen. Oh, dearie me. Ball went backwards. Colin Morris is frustrating the supporters here. Tate with the run. I think he was right, though. The ball did go backwards. Well, I'm not so sure, but still.
lows the dummy half on ta that was round Vasilikopoulos's neck there he is the slim line Marcus Vasilikopoulos he has lost weight Steve-o no doubt let's see if he can inject something into this Leeds outfit and really you can't blame referee also uh, Colin Morris in regard to the players are going back it's just as though they're sneaking up on every play of the ball which is snuffing out any open play they can see they're going back the full distance it's nil nil here at Bradford Bradford against Leeds but less than 10 minutes now to half time and that's a knock on from Roger Simpson well Paul Cook did the right thing he kept well away from him and Roger Simpson had it all the time in the world to take that well it has been a mistake ridden first half plenty to be said to both sides from the coaches Peter Fox and Doug Lawton on tag gets the possession from the scrum and Derek Fox holds up his progress Iro Vasilikopoulos Lowe's gives it to Harmon who goes on the charge Harmon and Paul Newlove just stands his ground here's Innes for Milo for Milo they took a huge dummy and for Milo a score Bradford Northern fell for the sucker punch for Milo his dummy pass took three men out of the line first blood to Leeds Good thinking from the stocky second rower. Innes it was that provided the link. And as he twisted around, that's all he did was just shift his body. And the gap was there. He took it well. Boy, this game needed a try. And it's a good one too. Look how he just shimmies. Simpson takes it. The defense was all at sea. Well taken. Long ball. See the three players. Three on one. And they all went the same way. Good positioning by Colin Morris. He sniffed out there was a try on. Look at that. Three players all going the same way. First try since December for Milo, And Paul Cook now with the opportunity to add the extras. Five goals for Cook this season. From that sort of range and that sort of angle he should. And he does. So Leeds have a six-point advantage. And we have six minutes remaining in this first half. Three Bradford players, they're all in the line doing the foxtrot. The gap's opening, and let's go. Well taken, though, by the second rower for Milo. He's injected something that was really needed. Sini for Milo, New Zealand international. He's Leeds' only ever present this season. A £95,000 buy from Witness in the summer. Fox restarts then, Leeds have the six-point advantage. We've got a uh, little less than six minutes to go to half-time. And certainly this game was crying out for a try desperately, and Asini for Milo has come up with the goods. And both sides will be happy to get into the half-time and have a bit of a rest and sort things out. Yes, there's some talking needed doing by the two coaches, Peter Fox and Doug Lawton. Lowers. Leeds finishing the first half on the attack and ahead 6-0. Hanley to Innes. Ball back inside to Cummins. Francis Cummins, he's only 18 and uh, he's hoping to go to Wembley for the second year in a row. Richie Ayres is hoping to go three in a row. On tap. Would love to have a sniff of Wembley. Little dab through, just over the dead ball line. But that's inventive play from the Frenchman. Good play indeed, and it just bobbled away, didn't it? You could see that there was no one at home. Roger Simpson was missing. Last line of defence, and the Frenchman just cut short. Now you say in regards to uh, Dougie Lawton, obviously, we'll have plenty to say to the lead side. Wouldn't surprise me if Craig Guinness goes back into the centre and they try with Francis Cummings at number six. He's got to try something to get this three-quarter line going. Fox to Furbank. Well, he's raw boned, is Carl Furbank. The referee has blown for a knock on right on the half time siren, so he says that will do. 
And a Sini for Milo's try separates these two sides at half time. Paul Cook added the extra two. Leads ahead by six points to nil. But it must be said, it has been a very scrappy first half. Very untidy. And that's the only highlight from for Milo. Referee Colin Morris blows the whistle for the start of this second half in the Stones Bitter Championship match here at Odsall. A local derby that has, uh, quite frankly, in the first half lacked a lot of teeth. And let's hope that uh, both sides pick up the tempo in this second half. Leeds are ahead by six points to nil. They're in possession now with Fallon. And Fallon has had uh, the boot ripped from him. Leeds continue on with Richie Ayres. I'm sure that Doug Lawton, Peter Fox will have called for a lot more effort in this second period. Oh, that's good defence, though. Well read by Paul Dixon, moving into the angle. And for Milo, a bit of a knockout of that one. And it is crunch time. I think it took uh, his breath away. Last tackle there for Leeds and Hanley. It touched in flight on the way upfield, and Hanley was able to pick it up. That's play on. So Leeds in a great position here at the start of the second half with Hanley, who chased the long kick downfield. That touching flight put him and everybody else from Leeds onside. Lowes gets it away to Onta, and he finds theirs, and there's a huge gap. And Leeds have started very well this second half. Richie Ayres with the try. It's his sixth try of the season. He grabbed one against Bradford in January too. It's all about taking your chances. This is on the kick, Ellery Hanley. Now you can see he was looking back. You could see the referee saying play on. So he knew that he could go for that football, and he did. They took it to that possession, and then the switch across. It was a superb pass from Onta. See how he used the dummy runner on the inside, which was for Milo. And Richie Ayres races through a huge gap. Notice the dummy runner, here comes for Milo. They just hesitate enough there. Trevor Clark was caught short, the cover was nowhere. Well taken try and well engineered by the Frenchman. Great start to the second half for Richie Ayres and Leeds then. The Welsh and English international, of course, Richie Ayres. This is Paul Cook. Successful conversion in the first half and Leeds who have only finished second once before, doing the chances of uh, finishing runners-up at least to Wigan at the top of the table, a power of good. Cook, with the conversion, slants it between the posts. So, it's Bradford nil, Lee's 12, and we've been playing just three minutes, second half. You can see Fimilo as runners, a dummy runner on the inside, but look how many Bradford players are in such a small area. The huge gap out wide. Oh, three double decker buses through there. Well taken. So Richie Ayres with the try. Nine Great Britain caps also to his credit. And Bradford now with a 12 point deficit to make up. And Ellery Hanley, who had moved way, way downfield for that kick, suddenly getting the opportunity to maintain the Leeds momentum because the ball was touched in flight on the kick downfield. But that just shows you the professionalism of Ellery Hanley looking at the referee to see whether he was going to say play on. Once he'd got the nod from referee Colin Morris he went for the football. Bradford's immediate response is to make two changes and the outstanding young Robbie Paul and Eugene Bourneville are on and Hamer and Heron have been withdrawn. Silicopolis plays the ball to Lowe's, who gets away from the challenge from Furbank. Finds Richie as the try scorer, but that was the last tackle. Leeds caught in possession. Now here's Robbie Paul. Great cheer when Paul emerged from the dugout to play and come onto the field in place of Heron. He's a talented player. The Kiwi Robbie Paul has all the skills. And boy oh boy, Bradford need him at the moment. They do, they need a riposte and quickly too. Simpson with the run. And now here's Medley. 
who gives it to Carl Hall. Short little pass, and it was well watched by Harmon. Well, if there's, anybody out, if there's anybody out there ready to lift this Bradford side, it's going to be the centre, Carl Hall. And both sides at the start of this second half have really raised the tempo. And there's Eugene Bourneville. First touch for him. Clark to Fox. Fox out wide. Oh, the pass really should never have been made. Panic football again. Dixon trying to get a ball away when it was impossible. That really has been their problem all day. Hard work for the forwards, and then they just throw it away. On this occasion, it was Dixon. Now Francis Cummings. Someone else who's lost a boot in this second half. There's Vasilikopoulos. And Carl Hall. It was a little high, but the touch judge and referee, they gave him benefit of the doubt. Hanley called for that on the inside. Gets the pass away to his scrum half on tap. On tap to take. That's better. Innes. Lovely ball to Iro who drops it under no pressure, really. And Bradford lives to fight another day. Well, we see it from Leeds now. Good approach work. The inside pass from standoff Craig Innes. Kevin Iro took his uh, eyes off the football again. Just hasn't been his day for the Kiwi centre, Iro. Leads offside. Well, the referee's not left his whistle in the dressing room. We know that. Plenty to pick from. Five well and truly in front on the blind side. Seven for the penalty count. Amazing, really. You would think, having seen that first half and uh, heard the referee's whistle again second, it would be a lot higher than that, but much of the referee's whistle for uh, technical offences as well as the penalties, which produce scrums rather than penalties. Here now, Simpson. Dixon directing traffic from dummy half. Oh, and that came up for Clark, but that's a great tackle. Alan Tate on his own line. He saved four there. Fox. Well, he had to be. He's got to give a penalty here for offside. He's played the advantage. On that occasion there, Ellery Hanley was so far offside. That's a try. No, he's held up on his back. It's great defence from Leeds. Medley thought he was in. And the Bradford crowd thought he was in too. Well, a quick play of the ball. Look at that. All the Leeds players are offside. They never made, went back at all. And he just couldn't squeeze it down. So the Bradford man held up over the line. Bradford's head and feet at the scrum, 10 metres out. Bradford in possession with Christie. Big possession here at the start of the second half for Bradford, although they've conceded that early try. Bourneville trying to use his considerable weight, the man back after four games. Fox, here's Powell, who went without the ball. For Milo, oh, and Ontak drops it. The referee will bring them back for the knock-on. Burbank thinking that they could have played on there. Well, the referee, Colin Morris, not allowing the double advantage. Powell, the first knock-on. Really has been a succession of errors from both sides. And again, we see Bradford do all the hard work and make a real meal of it. They look totally lost at times. Here's Robbie Paul. Little gap opens up for Robbie Paul. An exciting player, just like his elder brother. Here's Fox. Now Clark. Still going Clark. He's just hanging off for a fraction of a second, and Clark made a few more metres progress. Bourneville gets the ball backwards, so Medley couldn't pick it up, just got a boot to it. Bradford have made no progress here. They're on the 20-metre line. They might now with Simpson. They might again here with Fox, who hands it on to Burbank, who gives it to Powell, and Powell takes the tackle. Good tackle from Ontar as well. 
Clark called the runner in, New Love. New Love for a moment thought about releasing the pass and then thought better of it under that pressure. Little dab through by Christie, straight into the arms of Ayres, who was offside. Bounces right in front. Not much that Ayres could do about it. Took the option to take the possession rather than give Bradford a chance of perhaps scoring a try. But it'd give away two rather than a possible six. Bradford are running the penalty though. Bourneville struggling to get to his feet under Hanley. Not the best pass to Fox, but he made the most of it. Big examination of this league's defence here. Burbank and Simpson. And Simpson almost through. Good tackle it was by Innes. Christie's the dummy half. That's Dixon spinning towards the line. Hanley's hand in there all over the football. That was not the best pass in the world. The ball went backwards, it's last tackle. Trevor Clark to Derek Fox. All this pressure, Bradford desperate for a try. Hall dabs it through. And Cook is the man who just shuttles it dead. He was under pressure from Neil Summers. Nice option from Hall. Well weighted. Cook did the right thing. He knew that uh, he's been followed by Neil Summers. So a drop out underneath their own post by Leeds. Not only are they after finishing as high as they can in the table, of course, if they do finish second Leeds, it will guarantee them home ties in the Premiership all the way to Old Trafford. And that really is incentive enough, surely. It's going to be difficult to see them overhauling Wigan at the top of the table now. But the Premiership at Old Trafford, another big money day for the game of Rugby League. And Leeds will desperately want to be there. They have yet to play in the big one at Old Trafford, in fact. That time that they broke that duck. Ball to Bourneville. Offside against Leeds again. Well, will they offer a quick tap here, or will Derek Ford? They'll go for the short one. Yes, they want the four. New Love it was who took control of the situation. Fox to Paul. Out wide to Neil Summers. Passes though, Steve, are forcing the Bradford Northern players to stop and wait for them to get there. No one running onto the football. And when they are, it's plodding, and that's high. Off the shoulder, says Colin Morris. Paul Cook swinging arm. Well. Robbie Paul, that's a lovely ball to Bourneville. Hello, hello. Scrambling defence again from Innes. New love the dummy half, trying to use his strength. And instead of that. Leeds used their defensive strength. And was Richiers offside? He was certainly standing in front of the ball. It must have bounced off a Bradford player. Well, he stripped away pretty quickly. With the benefit of the doubt. There's a breakaway chance for Leeds with Iro. And Iro has got Cook with him. Well, what on earth was that sort of a pass there? Iro had all the time there. He should have just stepped on the gas, he slowed down. Leeds have suddenly sprung from defence to attack, this is Hanley, Medley hits him, Burbank takes him as well, and the referee... He's got to do something. Here he comes, crunch time, attacking the head of a player carrying the football. I think this is the third time that Colin Morris is having a word with a second row of Carl Fairbank, and I think he's got no option but to send him. Wasn't a big swing, but you cannot attack the head of a ball carrier. Or even one that's not carrying the ball. And he's gone to the back pocket, and it's a red card for Fairbank. I think Colin Morris was saying to Derek Fox that Fairbank, with his persistent attacks to the head, has given him no option. Yeah, that's another one. You can see a bit of a knee involved there on the top of uh, Ellery Hanley. Well, we said he plays it rough and tough. He was walking the tightrope. 
and I'm afraid the rope has snapped. The red card is shown. I don't know why he's shaking his head. He was warned, and he's paid the price. So Bradford will battle through to the end of this match now with 12 men and no more. Hanley is still receiving treatment. There was a bit of a knee in there as well, and I think that's what has caused him the uh, anguish and the anxiety. And I think the knee was accidental, it must be said. So after all that, Paul Cook has the opportunity to plant the ball between the posts from the penalty from Bang in front and give Leeds a 14-point advantage. 12-0 at this stage. And 14 now. 14-0 Leeds. Leeds ahead then by 14 points to nil. And remember missing. They have Schofield and Holroyd, Howard and Mann up front, and Gary Mercer, who's serving a one-match ban. But Lawton hopes that all of them will be fit for the semi-final next week. And he hopes that Kevin Iroh will find his best ball. He's just found Alan Tate. And that was a pretty pathetic effort at the tackle. And Tate with a good run down that touchline. Still not grounded. He is now by Christie. Bradford have seen more of the ball second half, but Leeds crucially have the advantage on the scoreboard 14-0 and in possession with on tap slips the pass looking for Innes referee says that's a knock on against Bradford it must be it must be against Bradford because the ball from on tap went backwards but why is he called the scrum as Leeds had the ball should have played the advantage he gets a ball on the inside now Innes didn't touch it well he's going to put a Bradford feed he's given the impression that he thought that Craig Innes got his fingertips to it but he didn't well it hasn't been a classic game for the players it certainly hasn't been a classic performance from one Colin Morris either that's one or two strange decisions that have baffled your commentators and angered the crowd and it certainly frustrated the players. That's a little invention from Paul, but he was impeded as he chased that ball that he chipped over the top. And Colin Morris says play on to Leeds. They have possession. Well, it's, well, a, nice, it's a nice option there. Ontak came across him and used the elbow, surely. Anyway, Leeds are off here with that. Firmino. Has Firmino got the legs on Hall? No, he hasn't. That was a centre against the second rower, and the centre was always going to win the race. Here's Onta now, they have a man out wide, it's Cummins, and Francis Cummins scores another. Cummins hugged the touchline, his 17th try of this season. Five tries now in his last four matches. It all came about from a wonderful run from Familo, and didn't he do well there? The youngster plucked that out of the air just in front wasn't a forward pass he, nice long ball there you see on tar stretch out for this one and he does superbly that's a well taken effort but this is a run that got them into the position upper body strength from Familo, handed off simpson but he didn't panic he didn't try to get the ball away trying to play the ball quickly straight away on tar he sees that the sliding defence is caught short. That is well taken. Francis Cummins, he hopes he's on his way to Wembley again. Remember, he was the youngest ever Challenge Cup finalist last season. But what a super run from Familo. He didn't quite have the legs on Carl Hall. But as Stevo says, he had the presence of mind to pick himself up, play the ball, and Leeds have scored. Cook then with the conversion attempt. It's not a bad effort just fell short of the bar it was bang on target and in fact it hit the foot of the post Cook's first miss and Leeds are ahead 18 points to nil you can see there's only the wingman out on his own and the players are going backwards quick play the ball you can see how the overlap is created but what a beautiful take 
Oh, he had to stretch for that, did the youngster. Cummings with the try. Two against St Helens on Wednesday in defeat, one against Sheffield in defeat, and I fancy one here today in victory for Leeds. So Derek Fox then restarts, and Asini Familo, who uh, led the charge for that try, has been replaced, and Max Schultz has come on. Well, a bit of misunderstanding between the two of the Leeds players there. Paul Cook obviously didn't call for it. Well, this perhaps is the last throw of the dice. Bradford will regain possession from the dropout from underneath the sticks. They're desperate to get a try. Hamer has returned for Dixon. Dixon's tried his hardest, but not good enough today against this lead side. Here's Bourneville. I must say, though, that this Leeds defensive effort has been a marked improvement from what we've seen in the past two games. And I think it's a good move from Dougie Lawton to take off for Milo. He's in good form. 24 minutes of this second half gone, and here's another test for this Leeds defence. Paul finds Hall, and Hall trying to scuttle his way to the line, and there's a tremendous crowd of Leeds defenders there waiting for him. Hall picks himself gingerly to his feet. Fox almost spilled it. Hamer wanted the pass inside. That now is the last tackle. Clark, Summers, Paul, ball in field, back out the door to Christie from New Love, and Gary Christie scores. At last, Bradford have some reward. Not much celebrating, and not many smiles on those Bradford faces, but Christie at least with four points. Nice link in play, ball out wide, Paul the jink in there, and you can see how Innes just left off him. Once he got the ball back on the inside, but good solid strength and what a superb flick out there. Christie fumbled it. Nightmare going through his brain, I would suspect, after dropping an open chance in the opening minutes. Beautiful inside by from Paul, but look at the strength there, and that is a superb flick. Woo, just takes it. Gary Christie man who began his uh, career in the paid ranks at Oldham. He's just done a little backflip somersault to celebrate the try. Through one of the biggest cheers of the day. Fox with the conversion then from way out on the far side. And what a kick that is from Derek Fox. Well, Bradford are in the hunt here from a match that looked as though it was slipping away. You can see Innes just backing off, and that allowed Paul to go through the gap. Once the inside run there, great timing from New Love. Upper body strength, superb. And whoa, whoa, just get it. But what a superb flick pass. <laughs> He's shaking his head. Robbie Paul, the Bradford substitute, certainly has injected along with Eugene Bourneville one or two more attacking options for Bradford. So 26 and a half minutes gone, and Leeds are ahead by 18 points to six on a ground where they have lost on their last three visits. In fact, they've won just three of 13 League and Cup matches here in Bradford in the last decade. So a famous victory on the way for Leeds today. Just the fillip they need, Steve-O, for next Saturday and the challenge of Featherstone, which will be no pushover. Oh, it'll be a tough encounter. But I think that Dougie Lawton will have gleaned some pleasure out of this is the way that the Leeds defence has moved up quickly. It has not fallen apart like we've seen in the last couple of games. Worth making the point, I think, that before the kickoff, Leeds were going through their defensive drills on the field. Yep. They certainly knew that they had a problem. Well, they've only got this week to sort it out. It'll be a tough game in the semi-final against Featherston. 
But maybe, Eddie, we could have famous last words from you, eh? Bradford may have a revival. Well, who knows? And with that fumble from Fallon, anything is now possible. Well, as Lady Luck turned against Leeds, giving Bradford that last gasp chance, perhaps. So Bradford will have head and feet at this scrum, and Derek Fox has certainly not given it up. You can hear him shouting and cajoling there, and that's a lovely dab through. One for Paul to chase, but just a little bit too much strength. Alan Tate was there, though. Well, the idea was there. It was a good kick from Summers. And Tate had just come back out of the straight line of defence just in time. Summers there, taking the option. He knows that the time's ticking away. It's a big gamble to take on the first tackle. Callum is able to stand in the tackle and release the ball to Lowe's. Just a little over 11 minutes left for play here. And that's a good run from Matt Schultz. The substitute's on his way. He's taking on Paul. And Paul was equal to the task. He stood him up, Paul, showed him the touchline and then made the tackle. Good run, though, from Schultz. Here now is Iro Over the top from Iroh to Vasilikopoulos. He is Tate and Tate's in. Alan Tate with the try. He restores the Leeds advantage, really, and just settles down any last 10-minute nerves. Well, how many times have Leeds turned defence into attack? It was a superb run from the substitute, Matt Schultz. Nice ball from Innes, Ayres to Iro. Basketball pass out. The Silicopolis back on to the fullback on the inside. Not the best attempt from Paul Medley, but look at this break. Determination, Matt Schultz. But the main factor is he did not panic. He knew the possession was vital. A quick play of the ball from here. Bit of a flop coming over the top, but Bradford were on the way back. They were absolutely disintegrated in defense. They just ran out of players. And when the basketball came, Vasilikopoulos back on the inside, the fullback Tate, well taken. Alan Tate's try, the Great Britain International. A try and defeat at Valley Parade last season. Paul Cook with the conversion attempt then. It's kicked well all afternoon. Only 18, Paul Cook, another for the future at Headingley. Look at that. 24 points to six. Leeds just settling down the nerves. Quick play of the ball. There's three Bradford players still getting back. It's all a matter of getting the overlap out wide. There was little they could do about it. Simpson came in late there, but when this basketball pass came through, neat pass from Vasilikopoulos, Tate in, and that should seal it. Leeds' last line of defence, Alan Tate, man of the match in two Premiership finals for Witness, 1989 and 1990 against a certain Bradford Northern. Oh, on tap, makes the big blunder. Went like, what, a, went like a rocket, didn't it? <laughs> wonder what he's saying in French, Steve. -o. Would you like to have a stab? Sacre bleu, perhaps. Well done, Eddie. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> I thought I'd get you out of that one. This is new love. Yes, you certainly got me out of that one, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Born Bill. I think Der Beard is about the only thing I know in French. <laughs> <laughs> you actually order two when you're in France, do you? Because you never order two over here. <laughs> Simpson now. <laughs> Trevor Clark, the dummy half. Here's Roy Powell. Roy Powell taking on the Leeds defence. And Leeds pushing him back. But Bradford now getting the penalty for offside against Leeds. He allowed the advantage. The tall prop forward, Roy Powell, trundled his way towards the line. Will it be a consolation effort here? 
He deserves it. Bourneville, he's worked hard since he came on as a sub. Not the best pass, and it bounced unkindly for New Love. It bounced off his chest. And then his hands. A bad mistake. They'll be ruined these mistakes. Must be well up into 13 or 14 errors now, surely. Yeah, 13 errors for Bradford and nine for Leeds. The unkindest thing, Steve, -O, that we can say about this match really is that it's uh, been, well, a struggle for both sides. I think the terminology is that defences on both sides were on top. But there'll be some pleasing aspects on the Leeds outfit, I'm sure. Mainly their one line of defence and their effort in that defensive line. They have scrambled back well. Fallon. Fallon tries to drill it straight through Gary Christie. Christie has bounced off his knees, he's able to pick it up. And much more, he's able to continue the run. It's a stop-start run from Christie, and eventually on tap. Nowhere to run and nowhere to hide. That's a cue for a song, isn't it? <laughs> Summers gets the ball away to Hall, and Hall sets off. Defence pierced, Hall with a sensational run from halfway, and the little Kiwi took on Alan Tate and skinned him on the inside. Well, he fully deserved this to the centre, Carl Hall. He's been one of the few players that's worked hard, run straight, and run hard onto the football. Handed off there, not the best attempt from Francis Cummings, and I don't think Alan Tate will want to watch this more than once, or if he ever wants to watch it. We're just saying how good the defence had been. I'm afraid it, it fell apart there. First with Cummings, who went far too high, and then Tate, not the best. Carl Hall with the try, then a hat-trick in the last home game here against Hull. Former Doncaster Kiwi. Nine tries in 13 for Bradford last season. That's his ninth of the season, this. Derek Fox just making sure that the pile of sand is right. Derek Fox then, one from two. Kicked a great kick off the touchline not long ago. But this time pushes the ball wide of the post. Four minutes to go then. Leeds certainly in control of this match by 24 points to 10. Not the best kick from Derek Fox this season. <laughs> Carl Hall with the try then. Alan Tate gets the game restarted. We're in the last three and a half minutes here at Odsall. Leaves ahead by 24 points to 10. Eugene Bourneville. Tackled, standing up. Hamer plays the ball to Clark, and here's Roy Powell. Fox. Helps it wider to Summers, and here's New Love. Neil Good Harmon tackle. has been withdrawn, and Jim Leatherman has come back on. Good tackle there from the sub, Matt Schultz. Had that remarkable run. Far too long. The kicking game hasn't been as good as what we expect from the talented Derek Fox. 
he knows quite frankly that a lot of errors in his side today they've had the opportunities they've created the chances frittered them away Fallon with another little run for Leeds counting down towards the end of this match two minutes to go plus anything the timekeepers might add remember Bradford down to 12 men Carl Furbank sent off Leeds will cement themselves into second place in the table but ahead of St Helens they have a game in hand on the Saints it should really be Leeds who finish at least second but this is scrappy play once more trying to get the ball away Innes had overran it a little bit of a panic football coming into it but they know that they've got this game well and truly in the bag I'm not so sure it's been a great switch for Innes from the centre to stand off here's Robbie Paul and our match statistics at the end of this game will uh, confirm the fact that Bradford have had overwhelming possession in each half Hanley has been penalised meanwhile for stealing the ball in the tackle but Bradford have had overwhelming possession in each half they've done nothing with it Steve-O no they've got to the point where they could launch their attack and they really have just frittered them away quite often they've often been lost and they'll be offside again well consolation try perhaps for Northern Medley in possession penalty count really is creeping up 12 penalties for Bradford five for Leeds and Roy Powell just stopped a couple of meters short Christie Christie gets it to New Love who dabs it through that's better defense from Alan Tate he'll want to see that again it was brave too well, he caught a stray knee there put his body on the line a neat little chip there from Paul Newlove. He's a big fellow, is Newlove. 14 stone trundling through the knee right into the rib area. Another penalty at the scrum to Bradford. That's the second penalty at the scrum we've seen today. Here's Robbie Paul, and here's Carl Hall. We're in stoppage time in this match. The penalty count creeps up. We've heard a lot of Mr. Morris's whistle. 13-5 the penalties. There's the whistle again. This time, I think, for somebody shouting in the tackle. No, it called held at Colin Morris. And he got the ball away after he'd shouted held. Well, if that's the case, then it should be a penalty to Leeds. And what's it going to be now? Now it's back chatting to the referee. Now he's put the scrum down. Well, confusion reigns. I said baffling, frustrating, confusing. And he penalised the scrum feed earlier in the match. And I wouldn't suggest for one minute that that one went in the tunnel. If there has ever been a tunnel in scrums in rugby league recently. Well, he's brought two rarities, hasn't he? One is for feeding, the other one was for the hooker. Not packing down. We're deep in stoppage time. As Iro tries to escape down the wing, gets the ball inside to Hanley. And Hanley is tackled by Roy Powell and by Neil Summers. Here now is Innes. Tate, quick hands to Cummins. Cummins straightens it up. Cummins gives it to Hanley, and Hanley will score. That'll be the last try of this match. And Ellery Hanley's remarkable Get scoring record up. continues. But he has had for him something of a drought. He hasn't scored for two. <laughs> I don't know whether the Leeds players have got some money on the name of the last try scorer, but they were celebrations. Incredible. Nice play. Innes gets the ball out wide. Francis Cummins, superb stepping. Tate got it away, but watch the youngster's skills here. His balance is inside. Look at the step here. Right at the right time. He knows Ellery Hanley always skirts down the middle. One of the best support players in the world. And Ellery Hanley perhaps on his way now to the world record for a forward in a season. It was a Leeds player that still holds that. Haig has got 40. And Hanley surely should beat him now before the end of the season. Yeah, that's his 38th touchdown of this campaign. 
One scored 55 in the season here at Bradford. Paul Cook then from just about bang in front. Well, very nearly. Should make it five out of six for him. And should just put the icing on the Leeds victory. Kicks the extra two. There's the siren. This match is all over. And Leeds have won by 30 points to 10. Ellery Hanley's 38th try of the season. Delighted with the try, delighted with the two points. Probably feels that Leeds are back on course for the semi-final. No one, I think, will uh, convince them of anything otherwise. They're all sharing a joke. There's big smiles out there. It's Leeds' day here. They will obviously stay second in the Stonefitter Championship tonight. But a lacklustre performance in truth from these two sides. A win then for Leeds by 30 points to 10 against their local rivals. For Milo, Erz, Cummins, Tate and Hanley, the try scorers. And young Paul Cook kicked five goals. Six and a half thousand here. And let's now meet the former witness connection, Alan Tate, in a moment. But first, Asini for Milo. Asini, does that put you in good heart for the semi-final? Oh, yes, the boys worked hard today. I mean, the fence was good. A lot of talk. I mean, we had to pick this one up to go into the semi for a win anyway. What on earth happened in the last seven days? Because you went from title hopefuls to runners-up maybe. Um, I don't know. I think uh, we just fell asleep in the last two games. Um, just uh, picked up a few knocks here and there. And like as you saw today, a lot of the young ones come through and uh, pulled it together for us. Now, we noticed before the start of the match, you were doing the defensive drills down there. You obviously realise you've been dropping off in the tackle in the last two matches. Well, the defence is the biggest key in the, in the game today. And uh, we just got to shut the middle down that and uh, make sure they don't spin the ball out too wide. And how fast men out there can stop them. Confident now for the semi? Um, just take it as it comes. Pretty confident at the moment, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Alan, a much better defensive effort from Leeds today. Yeah, as I say, it's all down to commitment. You know, I listened to Steve O's comments on Friday night. The last two games, we just haven't been committed in defence. He just runs through the side. You know, one person starts sliding off tackles, the whole lot just start. And today, you know, a full comment, you know, for the youngsters that come into the side, they'll give us a lift that we needed, and the defence was superb. And, you know, we've got the chances when we come along. You've dropped off alarmingly in the last seven days from the championship race. Is it a case of Wembleyitis? No, I don't think it really was. I think it was a case, you know, that some of the lads needed rested, you know, and we have rested them today. We've come through trumps, but when you're pushing for the league and you're only two points behind Wigan, you, you know, I think Dougie was forced to play his strongest team all the time, whereas a lot of them needed a rest. And I think it proved today that we could have went to Sheffield, you know, with a, a lot of more youngsters and they probably would have given more effort there. Yes, something happened disastrously at Sheffield a week ago, but I'm sure you're in better heart tonight than you were seven days ago. Yeah, we, we've got to you know, pick our games up. You know, Featherston have won the last seven games or something they've played, so they're going to go into the game with confidence. So we needed a big booster. And as I say, the youngsters, you know, they've given us a tremendous lift. The statistics from this match and Leeds working hard in the tackling. Scrums 10-8. The penalties, a big count, 13-5 in Bradford's favour and far too many handling errors. And as I mentioned in the commentary, the possession statistic proves it was Bradford's match in each half, but they didn't do anything with it. Leeds then go forward to the semi-final in fine heart. A victory here at Odsall, and it's not one of their happiest hunting grounds.